this is Jared Horak for the runawayhorse.com and in this week's video I'm going to recap the Belmont Stakes. I'm going to look forward and, and talk about some horses that did not run in the Triple Crown Series that I think have a shot to make some noise in this division later this year, later this summer and fall. And then I'm also going to look at the Affirm Stakes. It's going to be run Sunday at Santa Anita and the Pegasus Sunday at Monmouth Park, a local prep race for the Haskell. But let's go back in time and look at that Belmont Stakes, the third leg of the Triple Crown this year. Now, Medina Spirit was able to wire the field in the Kentucky Derby. Rumbauer from off the pace upset the field in the Preakness. So then in the Belmont Stakes, a Rumbauer tried to, to, to get two legs of the Triple Crown, but he was not able to do it. Your beaten Kentucky Derby favorite, Essential Quality. Uh, he was the favorite in the Belmont Stakes, and he was able to rebound. He got a better trip in the Belmont. In the Kentucky Derby, he was wide. That was his only career loss. He was, he was bumped early. He, he didn't have the greatest position. So just that ground lost and only losing by a length and the other three horses that finished in front of him had better trips. You kind of knew that coming up to the Belmont, if he could get a better trip, you knew he was going to be a major contender. And he was at that. Now the pace was a little bit quicker uh, than we expected, especially in the early going. Uh, Hot Rod Charlie was intent on the lead under Flavian and Pratt. We thought maybe Rock Your World would try to go to the lead, but, essentially, uh, but Hot Rod Charlie wanted that lead. And he had to go a bit quicker early, uh, and that may have cost him late. He went 22.78 for the opening quarter for a mile and a half race. That's pretty quick. 46.49 for the opening half. But they were able to slow it down nicely. They slowed it down up to 112.07, 137 and change for the mile. Uh, so they started to, the pace started to slow down a bit after Hot Rod Charlie established that early lead by running fast early. Uh, and he ran a quality race for sure the, at, at a mile and a half you don't see fractions like that all the time so hot rod charlie hung in there throughout and it looked like for a while that maybe he would wire the field but a central quality always sitting well in mid pack and he was able to to get up to hot rod charlie and then in the late going uh, he was able to uh, be superior in that race and pull away to win by about a length and a half so a good a good effort from a central quality so said, he was your two-year-old champion he only lost one time and that was in the Kentucky Derby when he lost all that ground so he could have easily been been undefeated uh, right now but it was a, it was a solid enough effort from Hot Rod Charlie for sure considering the pace um, with that fast pace he just couldn't quite go late and, and he got a little tired late you can expect that but he was well clear of the show finisher Rumbauer who finished just in front of my value top choice known agenda and then the rest of the field Burbonic, Rock Your World overtook France go to, you know, that rounded out your eight, eight horses that ran in the Belmont Stakes. So now Essential Quality, who was your two-year-old champion, has reasserted himself, and he's the leader of the division again after losing the Kentucky Derby, and he was able to get his revenge and finish in front of Hot Rod Charlie this time. And this was the, the third time that they faced each other. Uh, last year in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, Essential Quality rallied from off the pace. The pace was quick, and he was able to win that Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and Hot Rod Charlie was second as a long shot. They met again in the Kentucky Derby. Hot Rod Charlie was able to save ground. Essential Quality lost all, all that ground. And um, Hot Rod Charlie finished just in front of Essential Quality that day. And then Essential Quality turned the tables in the Belmont Stakes when he got a good amount of pace help and he was able to run down Hot Rod Charlie. And the top two, strong speed figure for the top two, and it was well back to the rest. Nobody else was really threatening of these two. They, they were the only two that really fired big shots in the Belmont Stakes. Rumbauer, solid enough third. A known agenda ran an okay race to finish fourth, but they were certainly no match uh, for the top two. So now we're at the halfway point, and Essential Quality is the leader of the division. Probably Hot Rod Charlie would be considered uh, the second best three-year-old right now after running good races in the Derby uh, and the Belmont Stakes, and then he also ran well in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, as I said. So Hot Rod Charlie's one that he's a Grade Two winner. He won the Louisiana Derby. He's been hitting a in the he's been hitting the board in all of his other stake starts, uh, but he's one that certainly you, you can think that he's going to win a stakes race at some point of this year. Maybe they stay in California, the possibility. He, he could come and run in the Travers. Uh, maybe they're going to try older horses in the, in the Pacific Classic at Del Mar this summer. We'll have to see what they end up doing with Hot Rod Charlie. Essential quality is pointing to the Travers stakes. Uh, you, you might see Rumbauer there. You could see Known Agenda there as well. And, and it's probably some new shooters. Uh, um, maybe Medina Spirit could end up... Um, running in the Haskell and since he's uh, we don't know what he's going to do after that but it looks like the Haskell for him 
and then maybe the, the Travers stakes for some of these other horses. But we'll see how it all plays out. Obviously, the horses, are, they could run in some different spots. There are a lot of graded three-year-old races this year. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about some of the horses uh, that I think that did not run in the Triple Crown Series, but they could make some noise uh, later this summer, uh, stepping up and facing some of the horses that did run in the Triple Crown. A Life is Good is one that certainly comes to mind. He was really good this summer. He was, excuse me, he was really good this winter, and we'll have to see if he can come back. Right now, he's just in, uh, he's just getting back to galloping at Keeneland. Not sure any time frame on when he's going to be coming back, uh, but he's one that certainly, if, if he can run as fast as he did over the winter, he was the fastest three-year-old in the country over the winter. If he can do that and return to top form later this year, he could make some noise in this division. A flight line. He was an excellent debut winner. That was April 24th at Santa Anita, and he earned a strong speed figure in that sprint. We're not sure what he's going to do next, but but he was fast that day. Now, following C for trainer Todd Pletcher, uh, he won his last start at Belmont Park impressively, earning a good speed figure. Again, he's a sprinter. We'll have to see if he can stretch out. And you figure they, they're going to want to try that, to stretch out and, and for some of these horses and see if they if they if they can win maybe some of the, the bigger races later this summer and then possibly in, into the fall. A uh, couple others, uh, Folsom, uh, this one is for trainer Brad Cox, and he looked good in uh, winning the Matt Wynn Stakes last time out, earning a decent speed figure, and he seems to be a late developing three-year-old for Brad Cox. So keep an eye on Folsom. He's one that uh, that seems to be uh, one that you, you want to keep an eye on later this year. Finally, Mask Parade. Uh, this one uh, won his last start at Churchill Downs by open lengths for Al Stahl Jr., another late developing three-year-old that just was not ready for the Triple Crown Series that could make some noise uh, later this summer. So those are some of the horses that did not run in the Triple Crown that I think could make some noise uh, as we get into summer and then into the fall this year in this three-year-old division. Uh, so now let's look at a couple of races in the three-year-old division that are going to be run on Sunday, June 13th, 2021. And we're going to start with the Affirm Stakes. Now, don't have a, a set field yet. They haven't drawn the field for, for these uh, races yet. And the Affirmed will be at Santa Anita Park on one Sunday. Uh, the Chosen Vron is one that he's been pretty good in sprint races. And we're going to have to see if he can stretch out against graded company and, and run a quality race. He's, he's been a good sprinter in Southern California, uh, Calbred. And I think that he's one that... Uh, if he can stretch out, he's been running some fast sprint races. We'll, we'll have to see. He could be taking on horses like Law Professor. Um, Airman for John Sheriffs uh, could end up in this race. Stalking Shadow. Uh, Hockey Dad. You might have noticed, remembered his name from uh, Turfway Park on the, the Derby Trail earlier this year in the Jeff Ruby Stakes. Uh, Mr. Impossible, another California horse. And then you have a couple Bob Baffer trainees, Defunded and and um classier now classier was one as a as a two-year-old highly regarded and we haven't really seen him since then uh defunded he's he was gelded this year and, and he's come back and he's been a better horse uh we'll see how he can do too now the pegasus will be run at monmouth park on june 13th uh in, in that pegasus all eyes are going to be on mandaloon now mandaloon was uh, your second place finisher in the kentucky derby and he was one that was having some success at fairgrounds over the winter uh, he ran well in the Lecomte Stakes. He won the Risen Star Stakes. Then he stubbed his toe and did not run well in the Louisiana Derby. He bounced back with a good second place finish in the Kentucky Derby. And now he's going to point uh, to the Pegasus. He's using the Pegasus as a prep race um, because he wants to run in the Haskell Stakes later this summer at Mammoth, their signature event. So Mandaloon, if he can run well here, and he should run well against a field like this, uh, he's he's going to be set to hopefully move forward in the Pegasus. So don't expect him to be 100% going all out to win this race, but he's probably the best horse in the race. Uh, some others that are pointing to this race, Hidden Stash, he was one on the Derby Trail this year. Weyburn for trainer Jimmy Jerkins, they decided not to run him uh, in, in the Classics, and, and he was going to freshen him up, and, and he's going to obviously be pointing for, for the Haskell if he runs well in this spot. Uh, but and Brooklyn Strong is, is is a possibility for this race as well. He was another one that he just wasn't ready uh, for the Triple Crown Series. Uh, he didn't run well uh, in the in the Wood Memorial, the Kentucky Derby. That they decided that they weren't going to 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 go for the Preakness or the or the Belmont, and and now they they're going to regroup and and try some different races for him. So Brooklyn Strong is one worth mentioning. Uh, but it's all all eyes are going to be on Mandaloon uh, in that Pegasus. Uh, so don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Make some comments in the comment section. What do you think about the Belmont? What do you think about 
of this three-year-old division overall and some horses that you are going to be watching later this summer as well. And then what do you think about the affirmed and Pegasus? After they draw the, the entries in these races, we'll have a better idea who's running and we can, we can discuss that in the comments section on who do we think are the horses to beat in those races. Now, my Triple Crown package, I did well with my Triple Crown package this year. If you bought my Derby, Preakness, or Belmont full cards, I had over $8,000 in winning tickets combined for the three days. I had winning tickets in the Preakness stakes, including a nice uh, profit and a nice Superfecta that day. I had the Exacta and the Superfecta in the Belmont stakes. Didn't pay a lot, though, there. It was, a, it was a chalky race. So we had winning tickets in two of the three Triple Crown races with over $8,000 in winning tickets overall in the three races. So it did well in that Triple Crown series. And then I'll, obviously my, my full cards uh, next year for the Triple Crown, I'll be covering that Breeders' Cup later this summer. Now, typically on my website, I cover so, um, Southern California full card analysis from Santa Anita Park in Del Mar. Santa Anita is going to run two more weeks, and then I'm going to be doing the Del Mar summer meet and the Breeders' Cups at Del Mar this, this year as well. Uh, so that will wrap up everything um, in this video. And just one more quick thing. If you're interested in free selections, uh, at horseracingnation.com, I have my, my daily best bets blog with free selections each day. At therunawayhorse.com, you can go to the California and New York pages to find free stake selections on those pages. So that will wrap up this week's video. I'll be back next week. I'll take another look at some more stakes races from around the country. Until then, good luck at the races.